good die young. I think we can find some consolation in that when we think of our late friend Rex Black, for whose memorial service we are gathered here today. Flying was Rex's religion. I saw him often from my study window, driving to the airport in his little open car, too fast perhaps occasionally, and I thought, that young man has everything, youth, enthusiasm, the work he loves, the devotion and comfort of a Christian merit. I'm afraid I'm a, I'm a rotten hostess. Rex would be pouring you all drinks. Oh, not for me, Stella. Well, my old darling, happy landing. Remember? You used to say that every evening when he came into the airman's arms. You all laughed at me, but I knew that day something awful was going to happen. I knew it when I woke up. Here, take this. Come We'd come just on. been to Brighton. I went there to get my hand read. Rex laughed when I told him about that. Expect a great sadness. That's what my hand had in it. Oh, what is that, Doctor? You'll sleep well. There are ways and ways of telling us about the future. Oh, those gliders of yours, dangerous things with no engines. Stands to reason you can't control them with no engines. Had he been gliding long? No. No, but he said it was wonderful. I don't know. I, I never went up with him. Well, goodbye, darling. Goodbye. Hope you don't go back to America. Oh, no, I can't leave here. You ought to get away. Get away to the sea air. Yeah. The old man's right, Stella. Go to Brighton. Get your hand red. Who knows, you might find a handsome millionaire waiting for you. Bye, Stella. Goodbye. Thank you all for coming. I'll see them out. I thought only generals and poets and things had a memorial service. But then old Rex always did things in style. I'll push off, Stella. Beautiful service, wasn't it? Oh, yes, and I thought the vicar did it very well. Mm -hmm. How was she off from that, today? Our ex was well insured. Anyone coming to the Adam's house? Now, there's a good idea. Oh. You didn't die. Three months dead, and I said I'd be right back after the service. And Rex, nothing went wrong, no? not a thing. But did they give me a good character? No, no, no. they said, uh, they said you weren't good in the conventional way, and you drove to fight. Oh, they said that, did mm -hmm. they? Well, I'm not going to go to all the trouble of dying just to be told that. Oh, I've been so lonely. So have I, darling. I can't tell you how dreary it was living in that boarding house by the sea, never daring to go out during the day, living on pies and chips. Oh, you've got a nice new lampshade. Yeah. And being Mr. Erskine. Who's Mr. Erskine? Well, I was. An unsuccessful shoe salesman, suffering from a nervous break. Oh, my poor darling. Well, I hope to do better the next time you see me. Yes, love. Miss Tilla, you look so wonderful. And I'm so happy to be back home again. You know, I got to hate that Mr. Erskine. Well, he hardly had any money and, and no sex life at all. Honestly? Mm -mm. He was getting very nervous. Mm -hmm. No, I was getting nervous too. Oh, Are you expecting anyone? No. Mrs. Black. There's a flat upstairs. Oh, thank you. Mrs. Black? Yes? I'm from the Excelsior Insurance Company. May I have a few words with you? Oh, 
Um... Well, I hope it's a convenient moment, Mrs. Black. If you've someone here... Oh, no, no, no. There's no one here at all. Come in. I'm afraid uh, it's not very tidy. Uh, I had a few people here after the service. The service? Uh, for Rex, my husband. Oh, I didn't know. Perhaps I ought to leave you. No, no, no. I, I just as soon get it over. Please sit down. <clears throat> The head office thought it might be as well if we had a little personal chat. Oh, oh, they did? Not that they're worried about anything in particular, but this isn't the usual type of claim. I'm sure you appreciate that. No, I suppose not. Not exactly run of the mill. How can we put it that way? If you like. I mean, they never actually found the body, did they? No. The Coast Guard says he had the glider under observation before it actually hit the sea, and that it broke up very soon afterwards. Now, presumably, the body was washed away. But you've heard all this before. Yes, I know it by heart. You can't think of any reason why he should want to end his life? Rex? No, he loved life. You could ask anyone. I see there was an earlier claim on an insurance for a Dove aeroplane that your husband took out for charter flying. That was last year? Yes. Uh, the, the plane was written off totally. Does that mean he was out of a job? Well, in a way, yes. Did you find him moody, uh, difficult to live with? I'm sorry, I have to ask you this. Oh, no, no. He, he was quite happy. He began to write books. Oh. What sort of things? Thrillers? Yes, as a matter of fact. Well, there's money in that, I suppose. Oh, and Rex never made much money while he was alive. Uh, would you sign this? What is it? Uh, just a simple declaration that, to your knowledge, your husband never said anything to you about suicide. Oh, I can sign that. I see this uh, insurance was made only three months before your husband was lost. Does that matter? No, no, I just meant it was lucky. Lucky? Well, I mean, you're young. You'll be very well off. You have a new life ahead of you, Mrs. Black. Well, if you don't think, I'd, I'd give every penny of that insurance to have him back. I'm sorry, I, I shouldn't have said that. Mr. Uh, Maddox, uh, how long will all this take? I, uh, I want to go abroad. Uh, I, I want to get away from, from this flat and everyone we knew. Well, there, there shouldn't be any delays from us. Oh, my hat. Where did I... Oh, it's... Uh... When you go abroad, Mrs. Black, had you thought of going far? No, I hadn't, I hadn't made any plans. No, well, uh, I don't suppose you've had a chance to, have you? Good night. insurance company. Yes, I know, I know. Just routine. But he said you took out the insurance just three months before the accident. Well, what about it? Well, he said it was lucky. Well, of course we're lucky. We're just terribly lucky. But after, after he said it, he looked... I don't know, sort of guilty. And so he should. 
All insurance men should look guilty and haunted by ghosts. Now, darling, there's nothing to worry about. He said it was all fixed, didn't he? Yeah. I guess he did. Well, we did it. We finally made them pay. Mm. What is it, Stella? I'm just so sleepy. Doctor gave me something to sleep. And then that awful service, just as if you were really dead, and all those questions I didn't know how to answer. You know, darling, I loved it when you said I'd give every penny of that miserable insurance to have him back. <laughs> <laughs> it nearly brought tears to my eyes in the kitchen. He asked so many questions about insurance on the plane. I got so frightened. Well, now, darling, there's no need to worry anymore. Oh. Please, don't worry. Oh, Rex. Oh. oh, it's crazy, isn't it, what we're doing? It's just crazy. Oh, it isn't crazy at all. We're only getting what they owe us, what they really owe us for that old dove. Oh, I'm sorry, darling. I'm so sleepy. That silly doctor. But Ste Stella, no. Please don't. Well, not now. Not tonight. Well, I I'm leaving in a few hours. I I've got to get up first thing in the morning. Stella, Stella, wake up. Stella? Insurance, I tell you, it's a wonderful thing. I mean, you have a, a crash, a disaster, something like that, and you're better off than you were before. Now, a new aeroplane. You know, I always thought we could do with something bigger than that old dove. I tell you, it pays to crash. It literally pays to crash. Don't make a habit of it, will you? It's you now, Mr. Black. Oh, thank you. Mr. Black? Uh, yes, this is my wife. How do you do? How do you do? Please take a seat. Thank you. Uh, no, no, thank you. I mean, if we're going to take around 20,000 off the old Excelsior, at least I needn't pinch their cigarette. Now, Mr. Jenkins, the reason I wanted to see you so quickly was... Well, I mean, without the form filling and all that jazz. We wanted to see you, Mr. Black, but we didn't want to worry you in hospital. Worry me? Why, you could come and worry me with 20,000 any time of the day or night. Well, after all, what have I lost? Uh, a load of bras, a couple of two-way stretches, a bit off the right kneecap, and... Well, what are we going to get? What? Shall we tell him? We are going to get a... A super-powered, twin-engined Viking that I can fly passengers in all over the world. It's going to be the start of the Black Elephant Lines. That's what we're going to call it. Uh, does the name appeal to you? Please, please. I've been over your file very carefully, Mr. Black. Now, you must understand, this is an insurance company. <laughs> yes, we, we guessed that. And we must have certain rules. One of them is, if the cover isn't paid, the insurance lapses. What do you mean? Well, you crashed on the 3rd of October. Your cover expired on the 1st. But I... Well, I, I must have sent the check. Oh, I'm afraid not, Mr. Black. What happened? Well, I, I, I suppose I, I must have forgotten. I... The money was in the bank. Damn it, it was there. Look. Please, please phone the bank and ask them. I'm afraid that's not the point, Mr. Black. Look, the matter has already been before my board. You got a check regularly from me on the first of each month. Now, you could trust me. But it was only two days. No extension is ever given when insurance is on a monthly basis. We have a duty to our shareholders. Now, what do they know about flying aeroplanes? Are they going to miss one meal? We're not a charity, you know. Well, I thought you were. I thought you existed to help people who'd, um, well, had a bit of bad luck. But because of your, your rules and regulations, we are going to go broke. With your experience, you'll find a job, Mr. Black. I don't want a job. The hell with working for other people. I want my own airplane, and I tell you, I'm going to get one. But it was only two days. Surely you could stretch a point. Look at him. He looks as if he couldn't stretch anything. I really don't think it necessary to talk like that. You know what I'm going to do? If I have to put myself in hock for the rest of my life, I'm going to get the best lawyer and sue the Excelsior. Come on, darling. So tell that to your board. You'll be hearing from my lawyer. You see, in law, the insurance company were perfectly entitled to refuse payment. 
I can't advise you to sue. You'd only be throwing good money away. That's what the law says. I've told you, Mr. Black, not once, but several times. And is this your idea of justice? If that's the attitude you wish to take, I'm hardly the person to come to, am I? I'm sorry, you might find another firm to take your case. There are such lawyers. Yes, I know. I've tried them. They'd only do it for the costs they could get out of you. Well, that's the law, is it? Until you can get it changed. Hey, Rex! I'll be ready for you in a couple of minutes. Uh, let's uh, think it over again, Rex. Shh, darling. You've got to do it today. Everyone's right. Everything's right. We've waited long enough. I, I don't think I can do it. I... Of course you can. Just wait. Well, try and look a little bit miserable. Oh, well, that won't be difficult. Still, baby, I... You know, I wouldn't ask you to do this, but... Well, we're only getting back what they really owe us. We can't let them get away with it now, can we? No, no, I suppose not. Right, Rex? Be right with you. Come on, sweetheart. Come on. You will be careful, won't you? Now, you don't think I'm not coming back to spend that 50,000, do you? Not for any silly reason like being dead. When are you going up with him, my dear? You know, my wife, she's got a terrible head for heights. Too bad. Are you going away on a weekend or something? Yes, I thought I'd try and make it to Brighton. Brighton? Well, you have a nice day for it. Yeah. Remember all I taught you. You all right there? Okay. I'll call you from Brighton. You know what it is about this gliding? It's dead opposed to our materialistic civilization. I mean, you can't imagine anybody doing it for money. Rex, are you ready yet? All right. Game along. Stay along. All clear above and behind? All clear above and behind. Take up, Slack. What's about? There's been a plane crash. Oh, really? Oh, I believe you have a room for me. My name's Erskine.
concentrate. Mm. Look, it's getting lighter. I have to get that plane to Paris. Oh, yeah. Now listen to me carefully. Mm. When they pay you the money, I want you to go to the bank and tell them that you're emigrating. Yeah. Which is true. Now, I want you to get that money transferred to the bank in Malaga. Malaga. Malaga in Spain. Spain. Right. Okay. Now, when that's fixed, I want you to take an ad in the Daily Telegraph personal column. Here, I've got it written out for you. Short, elderly American diplomat wishes dispose of dress suit, good as new, offers. Okay. Good. Now, when that's in, three days later, I want you to get on a plane and go to Malaga. When you get there, I'll tell you what to do. Well, you'll meet me. Of course, I'll meet you. I must go now, mate. Rex, Rex. When this is all over, we'll be ordinary, won't we? I mean, wherever we have to go, we'll be just like we were before. Of course. Only richer. These are sheep. Yeah, like I told you, I got half a million of them in South Australia. You know why I'm going back to them? Because they respect me. Oh, that lousy sheila sheep. Relay. Do you know? Do you know? I told her. I told her I got half a million sheep. I told her I got a million pounds Australian. I told her I got three farms big as a whole of Wales. And you know what she said? How boring. Did you ever know a woman, you, you tell them you got a million pounds Australian and they say, how boring? Seems unnatural. She's got... Come on. Uh, she... uh, look, Hank, look. If you're ever in Wombong, South Australia, I just want you to look me up. You just ask for me, Jim Jerome, because I want to buy you a drink. Uh, don't forget, Jim Jerome. See you. Ah, bonjour, Pierre, ça va? Oui. Sortez, madame. Was that the advertising department of the Daily Telegraph? Well, I'd like to place an ad, please, in tomorrow's paper. Ready? Short, elderly, American diplomat. <laughs> Un momento, one moment, please. Espe espere. La señora Black. ¿A que sí? Eh, Mrs. Black. Yes, who are you? Eh, para usted, las flores. ¿Qué? ¿Habla usted español? Uh, eh? No. Uh, no. Do you speak English? Yo. Yeah. No. Pues sí que estamos frescos. Es lo, es lo mismo porque, verá ver usted. You, eh, go, me. <laughs> Parlez-vous français? Uh, oui, vous parlez français? Qui? Je? Je? Ah oui, oui, claro. Oye, Rica, ¿por qué no me ayudas? Anda, échame una casa. Vete a formar maletas. Eh, al... No, Mrs. No, Mrs. Black. No, no, no. La maletita aquí, ¿eh? Ahora vamos al hotel. Hotel. Eh, Mrs. Black, pero antes fiesta. Sí, fiesta, party. Party. No, no, no. Sí, very typical. 
con, con twists y torreadores, ¿eh? Ah. ¿Qué te hago, Mrs. Black? Sí, no, Mrs. Black, no, por favor, allá. Empuja la llave, métela dentro. Ella, por lo visto, no tiene calor con ese cafecito. Para la costa del sol, ¿eh? Muy bien. Phyllis, arribato. ¡Eh! ¡Eh! ¡Por fin estamos aquí! I'll be right down. Qué tarde. Oye, acaparador, ¿qué es eso de venir con dos chicas? ¿Qué va? Esa no la conozco. Te llamo así. Perdón, sí, 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 sí. A la otra tampoco la conozco, pero mira, no está mal, ¿eh? Pues valdría la pena conocerla, ¿eh? Oye, ¿con quién ha venido? I'm Madge Pendleby. Oh. Of course, you must be Stella. Yes. What a pretty girl. Jim certainly knows how to pick them. Jim? Of course, dear, the Australian with half a million sheep. Anyway, he was most anxious for you to come right away. You know how those millionaires are. I hope you're not too tired. Pero qué tontería. Es gente que se quiere darse. Quiere darse, hombre, callarse. En el otro se ocurre todo lo contrario. Pues yo casi siempre voy a favor de los toros. Stella, Ricardo, Juan, Isia, Rogelia y María. ¿Dónde está Jim? Jim. Not a rod in the lands in my living room. You wouldn't believe it, but it's. I've got her for you. Hello, Mrs. Black. You remember me, don't you? Jim Jerome. We met in London. Oh, yes, I, um... Uh, I think I remember. I'm, uh, I'm sorry about your husband. Oh, are you? Yes, I liked him a lot. Oh, so did I. I hope you can stay a while. This is a marvelous place to forget all your problems. Well, it seems to have worked for you, doesn't it? Yes, well done. Isn't this a charming house? You really must see the terrace. Uh, come on, Mrs. Black, you can see all over Malaga. Excuse me, Madge. Is this your first time in Spain? Yes, but uh, I'm beginning to feel like a native already. Did you get it? Oh, the flowers? Yes. Thank you very much. Good. No, I mean the money. Oh, that. Yes, they paid me. And, um, you got it transferred? Dear, I was hoping that was a shadow. But don't you like it? I thought it made me look reliable. And your voice. The sound of the outback. I'm starting to lose it now in this civilized community. Oh, is that what they are? You've been marvelous, darling. Absolutely marvelous. There's nothing more to worry about. Nothing to worry about? First I have a husband, and then he disappears, and back comes a nervous little shoe salesman called Erskine. Please, and I got one night out of him, just one night, and then he's off again. Stand, and now I'm told he's Jim Jerome, and he's got half a million sheep. Shh, please, stop. I won't. Shh. I, ju I just want to know who I'm married to, that's all. It's not much to ask. Well, no one at the moment. Of course, you might get a proposal. Oh, from who? Uh, this Jerome character, attractive name, don't you think? Oh, you're going to ask me to marry him? Um, when you've known him a little bit longer. It's ridiculous. You can't keep on marrying the same person. Who is she? I don't know. Some window we met in London. Uh, where do you live? Oh, um, here. Oh. Madge picked me up in a restaurant. She asked me to stay. Uh, it's so much easier being a millionaire in somebody else's house. And uh, who is that girl? Which? That. The... Oh, that. Oh, well, that's Madge, M M Madge's daughter, Diane. Does uh, she stay here too? Well, of course. And what about me? Do I get to join you? Well, not tonight, darling. Um, after all, we've only just met. Oh, it's very comfortable at the hotel. I'll see you tomorrow for lunch. Oh, thank you very much. Oh, now, Stella, darling. Be reasonable. Stella, please. We've done all the worst part. All you need is a new name and we'll be off to South America. Do a bit of charter flying and we'll be uh, just... Uh, what did you say? Ordinary people? That's all. You didn't even meet me at the airport. I couldn't, darling. We had to do it this way. Now, cheer up. We'll be together. When? Tomorrow. Lunch. Jim? Mm hmm? The Gonzales are here. They're asking for you. Be right with you, Madge. See you later. Get over there. Thank you. Have you been a widow long, dear? Tres, cuatro. 
200,000 pesetas. That's the petty cash. Now, uh, we'd like our joint account turned into a draft that we can cash anywhere. Anywhere in the world, you understand? Uh, we're going abroad. Now, how long will that take? Well, the balance stands at uh, 7 million pesetas. Excuse me a second, Mr. Gerald. Of course, um, it's nothing like that in English money, but um, do you know what I am? Uh, a Sata millionaire. After all, I did die for it. Glad to see you two getting on so well. Oh, hello, Madge. Uh, I was just showing Mrs. Black the sight. Yes, he was just showing me the sight. Oh. At that price, they should be well worth seeing. The draft will be ready in one week's time, sir. There are certain arrangements to be made, you understand? Yes, yes, of course. Thank you. Uh, we'll be back in a week. Oh, come on, Don. Well, it tastes like lemonade anyway. White wine should be served cold. It's the only way not to taste it. Now, please, would you bring me a bucket of ice? You understand? Put this wine in a bucket of ice. Clumsy club, can't you see? You know, France is the only place where you can get a decent white wine. You never did that before. What? Talk like that to waiters. Well, someone's got to. I mean, they'd never learn. Oh, wouldn't they? A shoe shine. Well, places like these have got to give us some value for our money now that we're... Rich? Is that what you were going to say? So now we're going to have a lifetime of shouting at waiters? Not at all. A shoe shine? No. Well, I'm sorry, but I, I don't like Mr. Jerome. You don't? No, I don't. I'm so glad you said that, darling. I'm getting a bit bored with him, too. What do you say we get rid of him? You mean it? Poor old Jerome's been feeling a little under the weather lately. His heart, you know. Yes, that's what it is. It's his poor old ticker. Oh, I'm glad he's going. So am I. As long as he's sure. Now, what would you like to eat? Um, let me see. Uh, Entremesos? Hors d'oeuvres? Uh, what do you say we get stuck into the hors d'oeuvres? But, Rex, you're um, not... Waiter! Very well, Mr. Jerome. You seem to be in a good state of health, as far as I can make out. Very good indeed. No immediate danger of dying, huh? Not that I can see. I will be getting in touch with your insurance company. Will you sign here, please? Yes, pleasure. You know, I, uh, I work here for many American and English. If ever you have need of a doctor... Well, I don't think I will, not after what you've told me. I hope not, but then none of us can foresee the future, senor. You're absolutely right, doctor. That's why I was so anxious to get this fixed up. We are all in the hands of God. Yes, so we are. Still, there's no harm in taking out a little insurance now, is there? <laughs> I just hired this car. Like it? It must have cost a fortune. Now, Stella, we're not in Croydon anymore. Isn't it a bit ridiculous? That's what I like. Well, that's the way we're going to live. Oh, I've been for a checkup at the doctor's. Are you ill or something? No, not me, El Jerome. I told you his heart wasn't all it should be. Rex, here you're not now, going... Never mind, old darling. Just leave it all to Rex. I've, um, I bought you a present. Oh, they're, they're beautiful. An engagement present. It's about time we made it legal. I've got to get a paper. See how the old pound's doing. Got to watch that now, you know. Movement of currency, stocks. Get me a Bloody Mary, would you? Dígame, señorita. Oh, may I have um, a Bloody Mary and a coffee, please? Bloody Maria y un café. Muy bien. Isn't it, Mrs. Black? Hey, 
It is Mrs. Black, isn't it? Well, yes. Yes, it is. May I join you? Yes. I, <clears throat> I so often hoped I might see you again. It's extraordinary, isn't it, how one runs into people one knows abroad? Oh, you don't remember? Oh, yes, of course I, I do. I, I just can't remember where. Never mind. Fine. You're on holiday, I suppose? Yes, are you? Yes. Uh, you, you're on your own. Uh, um, Travelling on your own. Yes, I am. Jean, come join us. You did say you were on your own. Yes, I did. Uh, would you excuse me a moment? I'll, I'll be uh, right back. Yes. Hello, darling. I was wondering when you were going to show up. Pull up a chair, sit down. Um, there's a man out there sitting at our table. Yes, I know. Uh, but he called me Mrs. Black. Oh, what about him? Well, I, uh, I don't know, but I think I've seen him. He's English. Uh, Did he say anything about me? No, but... Don't get excited. Just, um, just try and find out about him. Take the car. I'll see you back at the hotel later. Mmm. They're pretty, aren't they? Did you order this for me? Oh, yes, yes. I thought you might like it. It's not as innocent as it looks, is it? Uh, they use vodka in it, don't they? Um, it's very kind of you. Um, did you uh, um, know Sam by any chance? Uh, Sam? Sam Cruston. I thought perhaps we'd met at one of his parties. I don't think uh, so. He was a friend of my husband's. You never met my husband? Uh, well, no, I, I hardly would. Uh, uh, Mrs. Black, I don't, I don't quite know how to say this, but... What? It's my birthday. Oh, many happy returns. <laughs> no, uh, what I meant was, uh, would you have dinner with me tonight? Uh, we could eat here. Oh, no, no, I, I, I'm afraid I can't. Well, look, then, you, you suggest a time. Um, because I'm... I'm quite free, really. I, I mean, I've got nothing planned. And uh, you're staying at the Miramar, I expect. Um, I have some places here. Somebody gave them to me in London. And uh, see now, we could go to. Um, of course, it's it's Mr. Uh, um. Uh, Maddox. I came about the insurance, and I wasn't very tactful, I'm afraid. Yes, I. I... I remember you. You said I was lucky that uh, that my husband had died and I was going to get an insurance policy. I hoped you wouldn't remember that. I remember you said uh, I would be, I should be celebrating. I've got nothing to be happy about. I can assure you, nothing at all. Goodbye, Mr. Maddox. Goodbye. You realize we'll have to leave. So? I can't risk meeting him. But I don't think he wanted to. He... All right. Well, what do you think he wanted? Well, he wanted to take me out to dinner. I thought that was quite nice of him. Now, look. If he's after us, your nice little insurance friend's going to get us ten years in jail. Well, I didn't think he, he was... Well, start thinking now. You're in this... Every bit as much as I am, my sweet little darling. How was he when you left him? Well, he didn't seem to want to say goodbye, but other than that, he seemed all right. Every time I ask you a question, all you do is give me impressions. Now, please tell me exactly what he said. I, I, I can't remember. Well, try and remember. I'm not supposed to be a bloody mind reader.
You know, you have changed since you became Mr. Jerome. I'm not being here much longer. Can you really stop? Darling. Darling, I, I'm sorry. I, I shouldn't have said any of that. I'm making too much of it anyway. We'll go down the coast. Find somewhere to stay. Just till the money's fixed. Then it's all over. All right. doing this new trick just for the money. We can't waste a marvelous character like Jerome. He was born to be insured. Now, come on, let's have a drink. There's no need for you to look so sad all the time. Let's see if we can find a room in that hotel. All right. Now, Stella, what's the matter? Well, anyway, darling, I haven't signed it. Besides, I can't finalize anything without you. The insurance company is doing well, as usual. There's the old pounds holding up to be You know, it's been two days and you've hardly said a word. I'm sorry. I mean, after all, I brought you to this beautiful place. There's a the sun out there, fresh air, flowers, and a bit of sea that actually wouldn't freeze you to death if you put your bottom into it. Oh, and these clothes. I bought you these exquisite dresses, which you could at least... Well, can't you be just a little bit grateful? Oh, is that what you want? If you ever decide to enjoy yourself, I'll be downstairs having a drink. Bloody Mary, please. No lo entiendo. A bloody Mary. Don't you know what that is? Uh, la la, señor, quiero un uh, vodka con tomate, limón y uh, sal y pimienta. Ah, uh, lo siento, pero no tengo vodka. Uh, I've already has no vodka. All right, I'll have a whiskey. Uh, una whiskey. 
Leon Juarez Parami. Ah, si. Thank you. It's quite useful knowing a little bit of the language, you know. It's only commercial Spanish, but it gets me by. Are you staying here? Yes. Your car? She goes well, does she? Like a bomb. You've got the power there, you know. You've certainly got the power. Um, doesn't it uh, come from Malaga, from the garage on the, uh, on the Cai de Lario? Yes. Yes, I thought of getting one of these myself, and then in the end, I decided they looked a bit like getaway cars. Oh? Yes, you know in gangster films, the cars they used to escape in. Hello. You don't seem to be able to get rid of me. Uh, no. It's terribly hot, isn't it? Perhaps we'd better all meet. Oh, uh, uh, Mr. Maddox, this is uh, Jim Jerome. Yes, we were just talking. Pleased to meet you. So you're the man from the Prudential. Well, sit down, sport. Won't you join us, Mrs. Black? Thank you. What would you like to drink, Mrs. Black? Oh, uh, coffee, please. Uh, uh coffee con leche. <laughs> well, didn't you tell me that Mr. Maddox came to see you about your insurance? Oh, yes. That's how we met. Yes. I had never thought I'd see Mrs. Black again. <laughs> it's all quite a coincidence. Yes. I was telling Mr. Jerome how I noticed the car. I thought it might have been yours. Oh, no. No, it's, uh, Jim's. He was driving me. I see. And you just happened to stop. Mm-hmm. As a matter of fact, I have to find somewhere to stay for tonight. Well, why not here? Oh, but I... No, please, do. Uh, Mrs. Black and I, well, we've just about run out of conversation. You'll be something new for us to talk about. Do you mind? No, no. Well, I'll just go in and see about a room. Good sport. Why don't you do just that? <laughs> All right. Why did you ask him to stay here? We can't spend the rest of our lives running away. We've got to find out just how much he knows. What do we do? Ask him? No. No, we're going to be very nice to him. We're going to treat him like our long-lost brother. Sooner or later, he'll give himself away. Does? What do we do? We'll decide upon that when the time comes. Here we are on a hot Spanish night listening to these gypsies, and all you can talk about is insurance. Gypsies with televisions. Will you dance? Oh, yes. Do you mind if we dance? Please, no, please be my guest. Have you known him long, Jim? Oh, yes. Well, not, not, um, not very long. I mean, I uh, met him once in London and then, of course, here. He's very charming. Yes, he is. He's Australian, isn't he? Mm-hmm. And rich? Well, yes, he seems to have an awful lot of sheep. I hope you don't mind me saying this, but you seem very worried about something, are you? Well, you know, the last few months haven't been... Yes, I'm sorry. I suppose you still miss him very much. Yes, I do.
Do you fly? Why? Well, I thought all big Australian farmers flew to cover distances. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes, of course. How many sheep did you say you had? I didn't. I only count them at night when I can't sleep. Is that often? My, but you ask a lot of questions. You know, it comes from being on holiday alone. Every evening for the past week, I've put on a clean white shirt, and I've sat in front of some cafe or other, and I've been looking for a big adventure, and you know, nobody's spoken to me. Nobody at all. How strange. So now that I've met you two, I can't stop talking. All those white shirts, it's very sad. You know, the answer is you shouldn't go on holiday alone. But you did, didn't you? Mm -hmm. I thought you met Stella when you were on holiday by yourself. Or isn't this a holiday at all? Are you on some kind of business? I never go anywhere unless it's on business. Big business. Excuse me. Incidentally, um, I had to get you another room. Oh. Well, officially, we're not married as yet. Besides, he might uh, he might open up if he, if he thinks he's got a chance. You know that book I told you about? Is that your diary? Yes. You know, I had a diary once when I was a child. Uh -huh. I used to write, well, got up, had breakfast, rainy day. I bet yours is more sensational. No, it isn't. No. <laughs> Come on, Stephen, let me have a look. No, it's, it's your private document. Is there anything in there about us? No, some reference to you, naturally. <laughs> Stephen, Stella, come on. Have a drink. Pity it's all got to end, isn't it? What, what's got to end? Well, I can't always go on pretending, can I? Pretending what? That I'm a rich millionaire with no work to do. Where's Jim? I don't know. He was. Stella thought you'd drowned or something. Oiga, fuera aquí. El crédito que fuera, hombre. Pero cómo es eso? Aquí no se puede estar. Fuera de aquí. Fuera. A la playa. Race him to the beach. Pero vaya una forma de bañarse. I 
I didn't bring it with me today. What, cigarettes? Oh. Is that what you're looking for? Yes, I was looking for some cigarettes. Well, let's put some of Stella's, okay? Thank you. Oh. See what he's doing now? What do you take with that thing? Wild game over the Essex marshes? No, I take everything. Yes, I bet you do. Now, here we go. Jim, t uh, Jim, don't be bashful. Now turn around. Hold it. Ready. Mark. Here, let me. Come up. I'll take one of you and Stella. Then you can have it enlarged, take it home, and look at it all through the long, wet, lonely summer. Now, come on now. Now, Stephen. Uh, Stephen, get a bit closer to her. Uh, now put your arm around her. That's better. Now, come on. Look at each other. Now, let's see those happy, smiling faces. Hold it. Hold oh, oh. it. I'm terribly sorry. Well, that's a pity because that was our, our Never mind. camera. We'll get you a new one. Stephen, that was very stupid of me. Was it? And I waited till my Billy Boyle. <laughs> Come on, waltzing Matilda with me. Waltzing that's Matilda. That's an Australian song, isn't it? Ah, clever of you to get. You're a sharp old sport, aren't you? You're being very Australian this evening. Well, I can't help it. It's the drink, you know. Puts me in my home. I'm tired. I'm going up. You coming? That, that sounds like an invitation. Now, didn't that sound like an invitation, Stephen? Oh, good night. Good night, dear Mrs. Black. You know, I wish she meant it that way. <laughs> Charming woman, Mrs. Black. Yes. Wonderful. It's a shame about her husband. I met him once. Did you? No, never. What was he like? Oh, he was a nice enough sort of chap, but hopeless in business. You know how it is. No sense about money. I bet she does better in the future. Of course, she still misses him terribly. Oh, I don't know. I think she'll forget about him eventually. Well, I, I think I'll go in now. Good night. Good night. You know, it's awfully good of you to ask me out tonight. It's a pleasure. Well, I don't want to be a nuisance to you in any way at all. Oh, not at all. Why do you say that? Yeah. Well, I wouldn't want to interfere with any of your plans. Oh, you won't interfere with them, old sport. Happy dreams. Good night. See you in the morning. Manana. Sleep well.
I got it. Thank you. Oh, good shot. <laughs> you know, when I was a child, we used to have traps for wasps all over our garden. Yeah. Horrible little pots full of jam and water. They used to fall in and drown. Would you like me to make you a trap? No, thank you. I've got to go to Malaga. Can you two take care of each other? Oh, we'll find something to do. Yes, I'm sure you will. I envy you both. What's the business today, Jim? Oh, sheep. What else? Well, I just had a letter from the bank. Everything's been finally fixed. What do you want me to do with him all day? Well, try and get a look at that little notebook of his. You'll find a way, you clever little old darling. Oh, well, I'll get those earrings insured for you. At their full value. You want to light one of these? Why? For a wish. Something like that. Would it make it come true? No harm in trying. Quanto por um... cinquenta, senhorito. Gracias. Here's a present for you. Oh, oh my! That makes me feel uh, rather grand and unapproachable. Oh, I'm sorry. Like a great duchess or something. I didn't mean it. <laughs> You know, Jim would never spend a day like this. I mean, he he hates museums and hates the smell of churches and things. Were you married in the church? Married? To Mr. Black. Well, but I'm why... just curious. Well, uh, no. As a matter of fact, we're married in the uh, Croydon Registrar's office one rainy afternoon. I remember Rex was just flying off someplace, and, and so we just picked up two witnesses off the street. I told you he hated the smell of churches. I thought you said that about Jim. Well, they're rather alike. Oh. I suppose if you got married again, you'd be very rich mm. with all those sheep. <laughs> well, I'm not particularly attracted by them. Stella, you can't go on like this, can you? I mean, you may enjoy it for a little while, but you can't really go on this way. What do you mean? Well, drifting around the world, spending insurance money. Sometime you've got to stop. Look, there's something I've got to say to you. No, please, d don't. Why? Well, I... I just can't bear it, that's all. I mean... Whenever anybody says there's something I've got to say, I... I don't know why, but I never want to hear it. Please don't say it yet. All right. Guess we better be getting back, huh? Hmm. I don't know when I've, uh... Well, I've had such a lovely day. Thank you.
are you doing here? Don't you know? Well, there is the drug. You can cash it now anywhere in the world. I don't have to stay here any longer. Do no. I? No, sir. But uh, when you wish to draw, please allow a few days so the bank can notify us and we can clear it. By the way, I'd like you to do something else for me. I've, I've bought a pair of earrings, but I wonder if you'd mind insuring them. Of course. There's yes. the bill. Uh, yes, our, uh, our insurance department will take care of that. Yeah. Thank you. The white shirt. It worked at last. I guess that was it. It wasn't just something that happened on a holiday, was it? I know these things do happen on holidays. Not that they've ever happened on my holidays before. Was it just that? You know, I've been thinking all this time that you must be in love with him. I'm not an airman or a sheep farmer. There's nothing strange or romantic about working in paint. Sorry, I work for the new Quick Dry Paint Company. Uh, the, the insurance company? Well, I got a better offer from the paint people, just after I met you. They gave me this holiday before I started. I've been so lucky. Lucky? Yes. Well, seeing your car when I was driving to Gibraltar. Um... Uh, what, what, what do you keep writing in that little book of yours? Oh, my little insurance book. I kept it. <laughs> oh, places, things, restaurants. A lot of nonsense about you. Uh, you want to read it? Mm. I think I was wrong. Uh, oh, no. The insurance is safer. Uh, did you think so? Oh, no. No, I love you being in pain. Oh. I think it's a wonderful job for you. Stay in pain. <laughs> Please stay. Rex. Tampoco puedo entrar aquí. It's just a maid. Why do you say Rex? Hello, Stephen. Hello. Could you do with a drink? Yes, thank you. What will you have? Well, um... That's a mess. And you? Uh, Scots, please. How are the sheep? Fine. Fine. Close the deal. Well, what have you been up to all day? Oh, we, we went around. See the bullring? Uh, no. Uh, then I had to uh, write letters, reports, telephone calls. It took me ages to get through. Where to? Uh, London. In the head office. Oh, that was a bit extravagant of you, wasn't it? Well, I, uh, I reversed the charges. Really? It was urgent. What was it about? 
Oh, just, um, just something they wanted me to find out for them while I was in Spain. Cheers. Cheers. Rex. What? There's something that I felt that Who I... did you say? Jim. Of course I meant Jim. No, it's just that I felt I wanted... Oh, hello, Stella. Hi. Uh, would you excuse us, please, Stephen? Yes. Thank you. When is finally giving sure this stuff away? That... He called me Rex. Oh, that's uh, rather a good name for you, don't you think? Now, listen. Did you know I'm... that he's been telephoning London all afternoon? Oh, uh, yes. Obviously talking about the case of the late Rex Black. Well, that's put an end to a perfectly sound bit of business. The future death and disappearance of James Jerome. Now, listen, Rex, let me tell you... Uh, you mean uh, you're not going to do another trick? Look, I got the draft today. I want you to keep it, put it in your bag. And before he tries to get us arrested, he's going to keep right up with us. We're leaving first thing in the morning. Before he gets up, we'll get across the border at Gibraltar and get lost in North Africa. Uh, now, wait a minute. You mean to say that that you're not going to be able to do any more tricks? Not, not for Jim Jerome or anything? How can we now that they're onto us? Oh, what were you going to tell me? Oh, um, nothing. I'm going upstairs and start getting some things together. In the last two weeks, you haven't been able to eat a thing. Now I'm hungry. <laughs> Suddenly, you're eating everything. Why is that? I don't know, really. I don't know. Excuse me, I'm, I'm going inside a minute. Stella? We should tell him. Oh, uh, no. Well, he's bound to find out sometime. I wish we could just go. I've only got a small flat. Stephen. It's like the place you used to have when I first came to see you. Listen, uh, stop dreaming. I mean, I mean, just don't count on anything. You shouldn't have done it. What? Married her. I mean, look at Mum. That's what she's going to turn into in no time at all. you really want, isn't it? A 
big car and lots of money. It's all right, I haven't come to make a scene. I thought you'd better have this back. I didn't think you'd want to explain why you lost it. Stephen! We left a message for you at the hotel, didn't you get it? No. Uh, no, that's why I've, I'm here to say goodbye to you. Oh, that was very thoughtful of you. Won't you join us for a drink further up in the mountains? Follow me. Yes, I'll follow you then. in your bag.
coche blanco americano. Un momento, sí. Con la aleta rota. Sí. Espera un momento. Sí. Sí, lo voy a hacer. Sí. No hay problema. Muy bien, de acuerdo. La Virgen del Carmen es la patrona de los pescadores y de los marineros. Y ahora, por favor, señores, quisiera que enseñaran la próxima vez que estamos aquí. Vamos a ver el Santo Cristo del Amor. El Santo Cristo del Amor es el patrón de una cofradía de muchachos jóvenes. Y si por favor vienen por aquí, les voy a enseñar la próxima. Por favor, que me dé, señores y señoras. La Virgen del Mayor Dolor, que es la que rogamos cuando tenemos la mayor angustia en nuestras vidas. Es durante Semana Santa donde rogamos con más intensidad. Y ahora, señoras, señores, por favor. Sightseeing, my old darling. Por favor, get in the way. Doesn't it choke you, the smell of these places? Horrible old powdered bones. Leave me alone. You were so pure, weren't you? Oh, you were way above a sword, a little trick to make a quick 40,000. Now you've got your hands on that money, you might get a little bit greedy. Come on, hand it over. It's old Rex's hard earned cash. It's what he's been saving up for his old age. I'll shut it out. I'll tell him you killed him. I'll tell him I. Give it to me, Stella. That's my money. Nobody can cash it unless they want to be tried for murder. Why not? You insured my earrings, didn't you? Yes. At that bank? Right. Well, one's in Stephen's pocket. They'll find that and they'll know you're the one who killed him. If you tried to cash that dropped anywhere in the world, they'd catch you. How did he get it? I lost it. Where? In his bed. All the time, he was just after me. He'd left insurance and he worked in paint. He was just a... A nice man trying to be kind. Why, oh, you. You. Don't be. Hey, oiga. Haga el favor de acompañarme. Por favor, por favor, venga conmigo. Por favor, haga el favor de acompañarme. Un momento. Usted y conduciendo. Vamos. Yo me llevo a este coche.
medio muerto. Vamos a ver, ¿qué pasó? Ya hemos explicado todo al sargento. Ahora me lo explicáis a mí. Esto, pues mire, estuvimos trabajando en la montaña y... Estábamos trabajando y un coche blanco atropelló a este. Trabajando y vimos un coche que venía y ¡pum! le pegó un golpe. Pero un golpe que trataba de adelantar un coche al otro. No, no, no tres veces, sí, sí, capitán. Tres veces. O sea, yo lo vi, vi que pegó el golpe y se lo avisé a él y entonces pegó otra, otro golpe y otro iba golpe. Dentro del coche? Iban dos, dos, un hombre y una mujer. La, no la mujer iba a llevar un pañuelo porque estaba muy cerca de la carretera. Y entonces pasó justo a mí y, y intenté parar y no paró. ¿Cómo que no paró? No, no, no quiso parar. Casi me atropella. Bueno, un momento. Vamos por partes. Tú estabas en la carretera. Sí. ¿Viste? Como un coche que iba al lado del otro. ¿Cómo te lo dijo? Sí. Entonces lo dijo. Oh, yo le dije. Bueno, es bien estar jealous, pero él no tenía que estar mal con eso. Yo pensaba que estaba viéndome. Sí. Fuimos a buscarlo, ¿eh? ¡Es ella, mi capitán! Sí. ¡Es, ¿Es ella, mi capitán! ¡La que estaba con el otro, la que iba en el coche! ¡Ella es, mi capitán! Perdón, señora. Please, madam. It seems that you were in the car, which was the cause of the so-called accident. Perhaps you can help us. close behind them. We had no quarrel at all. Mr. Jerome, why should he wish to cause my death? He just invited me to a picnic. So you wish to make no complaint against Mr. Jerome? You don't kill someone when you've just invited them to a picnic. Very well. I shall accept your explanation. Ya lo habéis oído. Estabais equivocados. El mismo admite que lo ocurrido fue... have to put up the insurance premiums on anyone who wants to make love to you. You're an occupational risk, that's what you are. Fíjate qué broma. Podéis marcharos. Bueno, señora, Mr. Jerome has been found. This is the place to go to. You may use that car. Ponte las órdenes de la señora. James Jerome, an Australian citizen. Had you known this person a long time? He, he was just a man I met on holiday. I'm sorry. 